Today I'm going to replace this SSD inside this computer with this, which is a, an NVMe drive. Try and get a bit of a view on it there if we can without the reflection. Uh, now the SSD, that the Samsung, is 128 gigs. I'm running out of space. And this I just got, so this one's 256, the NVMe in my hand is 256 gigabytes, and that's 128. And as I say, I've only got about 30 odd gigabytes of space left on the Samsung. What I've already done, and I'll show you in a moment, uh, this other drive over here has got Windows on it, and it's also got Pop OS, so let's say another Linux distro. I've already booted up into Pop OS and I've used Disks, D I S K S, or Known Disks, that uh, is in Pop OS, to copy an image of this drive onto one of the hard drives down there inside the machine. I did actually record this on the screen with the phone, but it was pretty bad, so I thought I'll just do it here on the desktop where you can see a bit better. Now, at the moment, the 256 gigabyte NVMe drive is installed, and the computer's booted back up. It's actually running on it now, but just ignore that. So let's say that was the, the Samsung there. It's not. That's actually the SanDisk. But let's assume that's the the disk that I wanted to replace with that new 256 gigabyte one up there. So what I did on Pop OS, because it's on a separate drive, I clicked on the disk there, then I went over to the right hand side and I went create disk image. And I give it a name. Let's just say I called it old Samsung mint system or something like that and I selected a folder to save it in which is actually on my two terabyte spinning hard drive that's within the same machine that's that folder there then you press start creating you put in your password and we can see up the top that it's creating that image now that took about half an hour to write the 128 gigabyte image to my uh, spinning hard drive. Even if the disk that I'm cloning, in my case I still had about 30 or 40 gigabytes of free space, the image file is still going to be the full size of the disk. So you're going to need at least 128 gigabytes of space on the destination drive to store that image. So that's creating the image. And what I'm going to do now is insert this into the motherboard, the NVMe drive, and restore the image that we took off the Samsung onto this. So let's go and get that done and see how we go. Okay, so now I've got the little screw on the blue tack and I've got the little post on the end of it and I'm going to use that just to get the thread started down in there. Okay, we've now got the little standout post in the 22 by 80 position there. So let's have another go at putting the drive back in. It's a bit hard to try and hold the camera and do it. There we go, I've got it in. And now when I push it down, it looks like it's flat rather than going down too low into the motherboard there. So that looks better. And I dare say that's why they included the little post that I've just put in there. Because it does need to be raised up just a sniff off the motherboard. And now we'll put the screw in with the blue tack and the blue tacks come away with the screwdriver where are we and there it is it's mounted it's installed at 
this point in time, we have our image and we've now booted up the computer again. Now I could have booted into Pop OS or I could have actually booted on the original drive still, which is actually what I did. However, I'm just demonstrating here again because yeah, the video got a bit messed up. So the drive's now installed. There it is there, we've clicked on it, top left-hand corner. And again, we go across to the right-hand side and we click on that little menu and we go restore disk image. And then we just browse to the image. So there's the image there. I actually named it Samsung 128 gig. And we can see over here, it is 128 gigabytes. And then we go open. We're getting a, a little marker here saying that the disk, it's 128 gigabytes smaller. Well, that's because the new drive's 256 and the old one's only 128. And then we hit start restoring and it all happens from there. So I'm gonna cancel because I've already done it, but that's the process. As I say, I sort of did all this with the phone, but it was pretty bad imagery. So I hope that's clear enough for you. Basically, you select the drive, and then you go and find your image. So restore image, find the image you want to put on it, and just follow the prompts. We're back in disks, and if we look here, we can see that up the top, device NVMe 0N1, 256 gigabyte disk, and you can see I'm selected on over on the left-hand side. There's the petition, or the two petitions. So this one's got the, this petition is, uh, you see that, 300 megabyte fat, so that's the EFI and Grub, etc. This is all my data, Linux Mint and so forth. And this is just the free space left on the device after we've imaged from the 128. Let's go now into Gparted and see if we can drag this petition to use all of this free space. This is Gparted, and up the top right hand side, device NVMe. So you could choose, that's the uh, the Samsung drive that we're actually currently running on. You can see it's SDA, and there's the other drives there. But we'll go back to the NVMe, and that's a new petition that we've just put onto the NVMe drive. We want to use all this empty space up here. So let's click on the petition and then we go petition, resize, move. You'll see the mouse. We've got a pointer mouse there. If we come down onto here, it's the grabby hand. So you can actually slide the whole thing around if you wanted to put another petition in there or whatever. Uh, sometimes you can break things doing that. And if you come up here, you see the mouse goes to a double arrow. We're just going to drag it all the way over to the right. And we can see here the new size is going to be 243,000 megabytes, which is approximately 256 gigabytes. Let's hit resize move. And there we go. Now it says down there one operation pending down in the bottom left hand corner. We hit the check mark, apply all operations. You get a little warning. So we're going to apply. I'm yet to find out if this works because, as I said earlier, we're going from SATA to PCIe Express. But yeah, other than the UUIDs of the drives, I can't really can't see an issue. But we'll find out soon enough. So that looks like it completed successfully. So let's hit close. And I'm pretty much done with Gparted. I've come back into disks and we can see now 
on the left 256 gigabyte and same up the top in the center there and now you can see it's just showing as one big 256 gigabyte extension for petition with the uh, EFI petition and so forth down the, the bottom there so it looks good let's go and find out if it works at this point I've now removed all the other hard drives and gone into the BIOS and set that to boot from the new NVMe drive and this is the first boot everything looks the same the only difference for example if we come into disks I can see that it's 256 gigabytes instead of 128 everything look, looks the same though because it is the same all we've done is increase the space effectively I can't say I've noticed it booting faster which I was sort of expecting I haven't actually timed it yet so I'm yet, yet to uh, test that out but it all looks good at this point I've actually achieved my objective of increasing the disk space I've doubled it basically and I pretty much did it without relying on you know any third-party tools or whatever with the exception of gparted that was the only thing that was the only other bit of software that you might have to add if you're going to do this and one other thing that I noticed I booted off the um, the new drive while I still had the old drive connected and that caused me a few issues as well once I removed the old drive from the system removed its um, SATA cable those problems went away however the ordering changed and when I went to boot into pop OS later on it booted about three quarters the way into it and then sort of just hung there or dropped into a, a shell or whatever it did uh, because it was expecting to find it on SDB but it was now on SDA or something like that so what I did I booted into the the new system on the new drive and I just run sudo update grub in a terminal and that allowed it to find oh look pop os is now over here and it was all good after that I know I jumped about a little bit with the the video I didn't record some stuff that I should have or didn't use the right recording method that sort of thing it was a bit of a, a late idea I think I should record this make a video out of it but nonetheless I hope you got the general gist of, of what I did and how I did it and from my point of view it was every bit as easy as what I anticipated I did have a couple of issues with the BIOS and um, yeah a few other things that I didn't include in the video but that's just down to my learning you might have the same sort of stuff you know unless it's the type of thing you're doing all day every day there's always going to be little things you forget and uh, stuff you have to sort out but pretty much it took me about half an hour to pull the image off the original drive about the same amount of time to put it onto the new drive a few minutes to put the drive into the computer and then I was basically home and hosed